Put the needle on the record. Finds Barrett. Get a shot up. This is for the win. Oh, it's good off the window. RJ Barrett wins it for the Knicks. You know what time it is, Nick fans. It's time for... 3 and D, talking all New York Knicks basketball. Need to talk about the injury to Mitchell Robinson. Mitchie, the kid's going down. We need to talk about the Hartenstein, the Hartenstein, also who I like to refer to as Lurch. You right. And, and that's more of an affectionate name. I, I, actually, I actually like Isaiah a lot. I like Mr. Hartenstein a lot. Um, and I was very happy when the Knicks signed him. I thought he was a, a nice piece to add some cohesiveness to that second unit, which he truly has. And now with Mitchell Robinson going down with the injury, uh, for those that do not know, Mitchell Robinson is going to miss eight to 10 weeks. He went down with the ankle injury. He just had surgery. Um, I mean, he was having a career year. He, he was literally having a career year. If you want to say it, and I will say it, he, he should, you know, if, if he would have continued this, this, uh, progression, he would have been all defensive team. This year, um, he, he's all his offensive rebounding skills. You know, he he's reached a different level in regards to that. He may have only been averaging 6.2 points and 10.3 rebounds, but he did have a career high in almost 30 minutes a night. And his shooting percentage was 59.2% before the injury. He is going to, he is going to be missed in that interior defense. He is going to be missed, you know, cleaning the boards, uh, especially offensive rebounding wise. And right now, currently the Knicks ranked ninth defensively. And, and uh, they could have been higher, but we put up some, we, we, we had, we had some issues with some, uh, I will say some teams that are a little bit more elite in the Eastern conference. And the presence of Robinson is really what is, was the standout in the middle. I, I get, I, I laugh though sometimes because you always think of Robinson as this young player and age wise he is, but he's been in the league for five years now. He really has. And it just kills me that he has been here for so long that he's become a fixture. That, But when you look at him and when you think about his progression, when you think about his potential, and you think about what he could be, you kind of pause for a minute and go, damn, he's been here for five years already. Now, the Knicks are in kind of a quandary. I mean, what do you do? I mean, honestly, what do you do? Isaiah Hartenstein is, to me, is an integral part of that second unit. He he comes in when needed. He plays defensively. He, he's very strong defensively. Uh, well, not very strong, but he's strong enough defensively. He's going to give you some rebounds. He's got some size at seven feet. So he is that prototypical center. And they're saying right now that he is not going to be replacing Robinson in the lineup. Looks like they're going to go with Jericho Sims and kind of see how that plays out. Um, I understand the thought process with Thibodeau not wanting to break up that continuity in the second unit, but you also don't want to create a hole in the middle of your defense for that first unit. So it, it's a catch 22. It's a balancing act. Um, it's going to be interesting. Like I said, eight to 10 weeks is, is not something is not something to sneeze at. Now we've seen it last year because when Robinson went out, the Knicks won 11 and 12 and the, you know, that's, that's not, that's not a great indicator of what you want to see. And I don't think Jericho is going to be the closer. I don't think he's going to go out there. I think Lurch is going to be playing those competitive minutes on that fourth quarter in the crunch time. I laugh because everyone's, he's so enamored with Obi Toppin and what he's doing with the Indiana Pacers. But what makes it even funnier is, did did anyone see the, the, and we talked about this briefly. Oh, actually, I talked about it briefly on another live stream. But does any did anyone watch the in season tournament game that they played against the Boston Celtics, which they won? The Pacers, that was. Yes, I know they were saying that um, Obi was dealing with an ankle injury, but he did not play almost the entire fourth quarter because he has zero defensive presence. While you you think of it this way, in the middle, you have Mitchell Robinson being Godzilla. And then you compare his defense to that of Obi Toppin. He's Mothra. And I don't know what the hell Mothra is, but it doesn't sound like that's a very good monster. 
Obi can't play defense. That's one of the reasons why he's not here. Yes, he is instant offense, but at 29 years old, in reference to Julius Randle, Julius rocked the mic like a Randle, you are not going to have minutes for Obi Top. And it's kind of the same situation that we're falling into right now, the quagmire with uh, Quickly and having Jalen Brunson in front of him. But that's a, that's a horse of a different color. We're going to talk about that later. But is there anything that the Knicks can do right now and, and kind of help fill the void? For Mitchell Robinson, you could look at free agencies. You got Nurens Noel out there. Noel, of course, was you know he he was part of the process in Philadelphia. He came over to the Knicks for a short for a heck, geez for less than a hiccup for like twenty nine games. Uh, he's played for only forty two games in the last three seasons, so he should be well rested. And of course, that has me being facetious. But is he a guy that's going to be you know be able to have those complimentary minutes with Hartenstein and Jericho Sims? You hope. He, he could be another body. He could be another big body. He can still rebound. He can still block shots. He's not going to give you much offensively, nor Noel's Noel's that is. He's going to give you more of that presence on the defensive end. He's kind of, kind of in reference to size and length, he's kind of Mitchell Robinson-esque without the talent. I mean, his career kind of hit the skids. I, I guess he's still kicking himself when he should have took that, Norris Well, that is, when he should have took that big contract offer from uh, uh, Dallas Mavericks years ago. But he's another option. Uh, what's, I mean, and I really think, you know, I, I really think I'm not going to trade route because I don't want to lose those assets. I, I still think the Knicks need to, if you want to be honest about the Knicks and we've talked about this before, they are a second level below the elite NFC, NFC, <laughs> uh, the Eastern conference teams. I got football on the mind cause I just did a giant podcast, uh, but they are a step below the, the Eastern conference elite teams. Now I still, you still hear the rumors. You still hear the speculations about potentially a trade for DeMar DeLaRozan. I would like that trade for DeLaRozan. I would like that. Uh, DeLaRozan. I'm DeLaRozan. Why am I calling DeLaRozan? I can't talk today. I just, I need, I need a new brain today. I, I'm still, I'm still go watch my other podcast. Uh, new York, not New York Knicks online, big blue, uh, New York giant straight talk. Cause I was talking about Tommy DeVito. And my brain, my brain is still spinning. You're not getting Zach Levine. Um, I still think that someone like Mitchell Robinson, Mitchell, Rob, Mitchell Robinson, <laughs> damn it, Tim, think about it. I'm still thinking that Donovan Mitchell is not the answer because of the fact, like I said, I cannot see a backcourt of Mitchell and Brunson. Cause that is just going to be the Titanic of defense. And if you do not have someone like Mitchell Robinson in the back, Def, you know, helping defend for these two guys, you, you are going to be giving up a lot of points. There's going to be a lot of people driving in the lane, especially if you have someone like Brunson and Donovan Mitchell out there. Now, offensively, they're going to give you, they're going to give you everything. And like I said, you're going to have to win games like 148, 136. But if there's a way to move on, uh, if, if there is a way to bring him in, I, I would be all right with that. The, the biggest issue right now hampering the Knicks offense, and I think this has been an issue for years, and it's been an issue a lot of Tom Thibodeau teams, is they don't, they don't facilitate the ball well. Tom Thibodeau teams, and the Knicks are no exceptions, are usually fairly low in reference to assists. I think we're 20-something right now. We're in the low 20s right now in reference to assists per game. Um, you have two predominant players. You have two players that predominantly need to have the ball. They need to have ISO. They need to have one-on-one. They need to have the ball in their hands. And that's going to, of course, be Brunson and Randall. Um, at times, R.J. Barrett does the same thing, but he has a little bit more of the ability to, to flow through the offense, and he uses a lot more movement to get himself open. Um, but you have two you have two gentlemen who, who predominantly need the ball in their hands, and they prefer to, you know, to go one-on-one. They prefer to set up their own shots. And the, only, and the only problem with that is when you do that, of course, you're winding down the shot clock and the fact that if you miss, you know, you better hope you're getting the offensive rebound. Oh, wait a minute. Mitchell Robinson's not there. This is the issue that I'm seeing. This is the issue that we have. This is the hand that we are dealt. This is the way the roster has been constructed. I still think, of course, the Knicks are going to be a playoff team. I see them being five or six, even with this uh, extended period of time missing Mitchell Robinson. But at the end of the day, could they could they potentially get out of the second round? It really would be a, it would really depend on the matchup. So I, I definitely think they're a first round winner in the playoffs. I, if can they get out of the second? Like I said, we'll have to just kind of see. But it's it's one of those things that right now the way they're constructed, they need to find a way where they can have more continuity and more flow in the offense. And and I I think that 
if they, I, I don't see Thibodeau changing course or changing the direction of the style of the offense that he runs because of the talent that he has, but he may just need to change a little bit of his perspective of what he needs to do and what he should be doing and what he can't do now with the absence of Mitchell Robinson. And again, we're going to have a lot of fun videos coming out today. I'll have, I'm going to be, I'm going to be laying back a little bit on the giant video. So we're definitely going to be focusing more on the next video. So we're cause we have a lot of fun with this. So my continuity, my thought process will be a little bit better, but you know what? This is Tim. This is 3 and D talking all New York Knicks and I'm out of here. <laughs>